Hi, I'm Matt, and welcome to Tech Tested. Today we're going to be exploring the only six core Athlon AMD ever released. So the informed among you may be looking back in your memory banks and thinking, wait a minute, AMD never released a six core Athlon. And you'd be mostly correct. The CPU in question is the AMD Athlon 2X4640. Now before we move ahead, we need to go back in time to when AMD released the AM2 Plus platform. In order to entice budget-minded PC builders, AMD released a feature called Core Unlocking. Essentially, AMD gave you the possibility of unlocking dormant cores on your dual and triple core processors to make them quad-core processors. This feature continued on into the AM3 platform with the Athlon 2 and Phenom 2 processors. And towards the end of the lifespan of the AM3 platform with the Phenom 2s and Athlon 2s, AMD released some six-core Phenom processors. They also touted several quad-core Phenom processors that could potentially unlock to six cores, such as the Phenom 2 X4 960T, the T referencing the Thuban core upon which the six cores were based. Now, core unlocking back then was a big draw for AMD enthusiasts, but it was always recommended that if you actually needed a quad-core processor, you go out and buy one, since there was no guarantee that a dual-core CPU or a triple-core could unlock to four cores nor was there a guarantee that the Phenom 960T would unlock to a six core. And this is where the Athlon 2X4 640 comes in. Now, before you go to eBay and buy the cheapest Athlon 2X4 640 you can find and get an AM3 motherboard that claims unlocking features and try to unlock it, there are a few things you need to know that make this much more difficult than it may seem on the surface. First thing you need to know is not all Athlon 2X4 640s unlock to six cores. There are two different variants, one with the serial number ending in a GM, which does not unlock. That is based on the older Deneb core. What you need to look for is the one with the serial number ending in GR. This is based on the Thuban core and is known as Zosma. So now that we've identified the CPU, there's still no guarantee it will unlock. Some of these are just six core Thubins with two cores disabled and the L3 cache disabled. However, most of these were manufactured as quad cores because the two dormant cores were not able to run properly. So essentially what you're doing here is playing the silicon lottery. There's no guarantee that if you pick up one of these CPUs that it will unlock to a six core. But let's say for a moment you did get lucky and you did get one that is capable of unlocking to six cores. Well, now you've got to find the right motherboard. There are many motherboard models out there from the AM2 Plus all the way up to the AM3 Plus series that claim to be able to unlock cores. However, you can't just pick up any motherboard that this Athlon will fit into. Many AM3 Plus motherboards are not capable of unlocking cores because that's a feature that the manufacturers felt was no longer necessary after the FX line came out. The AM2 Plus platform is also probably a bad choice seeing as how those were designed to unlock the first generation Athlons and Phenoms and did not have the instructions necessary to unlock the later Phenom 2 and Athlon 2 CPUs. So in my experience, your best bet is going with an AM3 motherboard with an 800 series chipset. Still, that's no guarantee. There are plenty of stories online where people had a CPU unlocked on one motherboard, upgraded their motherboard later, and now it was no longer unlockable. So essentially, you have to play the silicon lottery on the CPU side as well as the motherboard. That's quite a big pill to swallow. All right, let's say you went through all of that and picked up a CPU that could unlock and a motherboard that could unlock that CPU. You're still not out of the woods. Just because a CPU will unlock those dormant cores doesn't mean it's gonna be stable. Sometimes you have to apply more voltage to the CPU in order to get those dormant cores to unlock and be stable into Windows and use on a daily basis. What's more, if you had any intentions of overclocking this CPU, once you've unlocked cores, the temperature monitor inside the CPU die becomes disabled, making it impossible for you to monitor the CPU temperatures inside of Windows. You see why this might be a bit of a pain in the butt? There are very few people willing to put in the effort to actually try this, much less being able to find a CPU that will unlock. To put this into perspective, I picked up an Asus Crosshair 5 formula because I thought it was the most high-end motherboard for AM3+, and it must have the unlocking feature available, right? Wrong. That feature was nowhere to be found on this motherboard since it was designed for the FX processors and not the Phenoms. No worries, I picked up an AM2 Plus motherboard that touted its unlocking abilities. But after attempting to use it to unlock Phenom 2 processors and Athlon 2 processors, I had no luck. I did have one AM3 motherboard left to try that while it was a low-end model, was able to unlock a few Athlon and Phenom 2 processors. Next step, acquiring the processors to unlock. I ended up getting four Athlon 2X4640s with the GR designation. 
The first CPU I tested was a dud. It would not unlock the dormant cores on the processor, which meant they were unstable. Strike one. The second CPU I tested shows some promise. Once you got into the BIOS and unlocked the cores, it did show all six cores there. But no matter how much voltage I applied, it would not get into Windows. It was simply not stable. Strike two. The third CPU I tested, however, paid off. I was able to unlock both dormant cores as well as the L3 cache of a Phenom 2 processor. Oh, and the fourth processor? That one was a dud too. But we did have one good processor and it was even stable at stock voltages. Once you boot into Windows, it shows up in CPU-Z as a Phenom 2 X6 1405T. Now I hear you guys saying, well, CPU-Z says it's a Phenom, so it's not actually a six core Athlon. But if you look at the die on the CPU, it is printed on there Athlon 2. So in my mind, that makes it a six core Athlon. This model was never released by AMD. And if you scroll down in CPU-Z, you will see that it says processor model unknown. This trend continues on into Cinebench and Firestrike, where they have no idea what CPU is actually in your system. If you guys know anything about this channel though, I couldn't leave it alone. I had to overclock it. Unfortunately, we ran into the problem where I couldn't monitor the CPU temperatures. Still, I had to take a risk. So I slapped a 240 millimeter AIO liquid cooler on it and I set the voltage to 1.35, which is a rather modest voltage setting for these processors. I was able to get it stable to 3.8 gigahertz and we were off to the races. And we finally get to the benchmark so you guys can see what this CPU does. Now I'm not in any way suggesting you go out and buy this processor and attempt this. This was actually a rather expensive endeavor for me. However, I did want to show you guys this processor because it's my personal favorite and I wanted to show you the difference in performance between the Athlon 2 X4 640 and the unlocked 6 core version that we have here. We paired it with an R9 290X graphics card and 16 gigabytes of RAM and we turned all the settings down all the way on our benchmarks so that we could get a CPU bottleneck representation. So after looking at the benchmarks, you can see that if you happen to have this CPU and unlock it, you can get a huge performance increase. Now unfortunately, the Phenom series does not have all the instruction sets necessary to run modern titles. And again, I am in no way suggesting you go out and try this unless you are just doing it for your own entertainment. This is definitely not something you want to use for gaming. Still, ever since my discovery of this processor a few years ago, I have been hunting for it and I was finally able to achieve it, and it is my favorite processor of all time. It's not because of the performance, and it's not even because of the rarity. While this CPU is relatively common, very few people have attempted to unlock this, and it is a very rare example of one that actually worked right out of the box and unlocked perfectly. In all honesty, at this point, I'm not even sure what I'm gonna do with the processor. It will most likely end up in a frame on a shelf in a place of honor, since it is a very rare chip, and it is very uncommon to actually find one that will achieve this. I hope you guys like this content. I know it's not exactly relevant for most modern gaming, but it's something I'm very passionate about and I really enjoyed doing. As always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe, follow us on our social media platforms, and check out our Discord and our website so you can pick yourself up some tech tested merch. Oh, and my package for it, it says golden chip, because to me it's golden chip.